Hello, Marcel here to show you how to cache simulated geometry to disk, how to export and import PRT files, and how to create dents in your simulated objects. Exporting recorded geometry to external files on your hard disk has been a requested feature because it allows you to reduce the overall size of your scene when you have recorded objects in it, as well as pass this cache around and reuse it between different objects. To show this, I will create a simple scene as usual, which is just going to consist of a plane and a sphere, and this is just going to demonstrate the basic caching functionality in a simple way without creating any complexity of the simulation itself. So I will just make the sphere as a liquid so we can simulate it as particles and I'm going to turn my grid off and set the ground plane as a static object. As always, if I just simulate right now, the plane will spread on the ground plane object and behave as a fluid. So the actual useful part in doing a simulation like this is with the ability to record this simulation on your timeline. And I will just do this by exiting the simulation and pressing the record button and letting the simulation run through and all of this data being cached onto your RAM. So right now all this data is loaded into RAM and if I save my file somewhere, let's just call it test.max, we can see that the max file right now is actually very large. It is over 150 megabytes in size and this is just including one simple scene with a single fluid object, which is not very desirable because even more complex scenes can take up potentially gigabytes of size and this is not something that you want to pass on to other artists such as animators where they might not even need the simulation data to perform their work. So to solve this problem, what we can do is we can cache out this recorded data to hard drive as a separate file and keep the max file itself pretty low in size. To do this I'm going to go into the max modify panel and scroll all the way down to find recording settings rollout. In here we have a couple of new options. First new option is the ability to record data or not record data. This is also new to this build and it allows you to selectively specify which objects inside the scene you want to be recorded when you press the record button. If I have two spheres for example and one of them has this record data unchecked, only the sphere that has the record option checked will be recorded and have its simulation cached. Another new option is the ability to clear your recording. Before it was not possible until you re-recorded, but for example if right now I wanted my scene to go back to a normal size, I could clear all of this data which will not be saved with the scene anymore. So let me just do that. I'm gonna press clear, it's gonna ask me whether I'm sure and I'm gonna say yes and we no longer have the recorded data here. So if I play everything back, the sphere no longer displays any animation. And the last new option that we have for recording is the ability to save to file. Let me just use this checkbox here and press the browse button and I'm going to select a file name which will be the file to which my animation will be cached. So I'm just gonna name it as test uh, cache and I'm going to select the Lucid Recorded Data or LRD format. And this is our internally created format and it basically allows you to save all of the simulated data for an object into a single file. And the good thing about this format is that it allows you to save meshes as well as particles. So you don't really have to worry about your show as particle setting or any other settings in Lucid. Everything will be properly respected. So let me just press save and I will have my file name here. So now if I simulate, everything is simulated as before and we still have our animation playing in RAM, but now we have all this data saved into our cache file and if I'm just going to save the scene quickly and go back to the folder where I saved my scene, you can see that the actual max file is very small again, it's only 228 kilobytes where the cache file that we saved is now big and this is great because now you can take this cache and you can move it to another location and at a later point you can insert it back into the scene without breaking any of the simulated data. You can also create a whole different sphere, for example I'm gonna create one that's larger than this one and throw a lucid operator on it just like before and I can go and load this file that we have just saved. So I'm going to load the same test.cache file and it will load the exact same animation, although this sphere has different transforms, so we need to rotate it. So to show you the second part of the caching functionality, I have deleted the second sphere and I'm going to resort back to my initial simulated object. And what I'll do is I'll just clear all the previous data that I have assigned, which will both remove the file reference and it's going to remove all the data that I have recorded for my sphere so far. What we will do now is we will cache again the animation for the sphere, but this time instead of using our internal Lucid cache format, we will use Thinkbox PRT particle export format. And the advantage of this method is that you can take these PRT files and load them in Thinkbox products like Frost or Krakatoa and render them outside of Lucid. So let me just give this a name of particles.prt and I'm just gonna press save. Lucid will automatically append the sequence number to the particle files. If I simulate now, the PRT files will be generated right after the simulation is completed. So once the simulation is done, we have the playback capability as we did before, but now the cached out data
data was saved to particles file instead of our previous LRD file. And these particles, each one contains a single frame. So particle zero contains the zero frame and so on. And you can see that we have one file per each frame inside our sequence. So just like before, you can also load PRT files as well as save them for Lucid Object. But the main purpose of using this format is of course to go to Krakatoa or Frost or Xmesh. And I'm just going to reset my file and show you how to load this in Krakatoa. So I'm going to go to the Krakatoa dropdown in my create panel and I'm going to create a PRT loader which I will create inside my viewport. And I'm just going to go into the same directory where I saved out my sequence. I will just select the very first PRT file and the Krakatoa will recognize this as a sequence and load it as such. So if I maximize the viewport, right now it is only loading part of the particles, but I can change this by going down and specifying 100% of the particles to render here. Right now it's only set to 1%. So if I set this to 100%, all of the particles are being loaded now. And you can see that we might need to rotate this to get the proper orientation going for our particle. So about 90 degrees should do it. And if I just move it up, we can see that the orientation is now correct. And if I play this back, our whole animation range should be playable back. I have added a Krakatoa atmospheric and selected my Krakatoa loader as the source. And I also changed my render in 3ds Max to Krakatoa. So with very basic settings, if I render my scene at this moment, I will get my sphere rendered as particles, which is proof that the PRT file, which we loaded, actually works. So for the next part of this tutorial, I wanted to show how to create dents in your object. All the simulations we've done before had objects being soft or bending, but they were never able to retain their shape over a longer period of time. So I created a little scene where I have a box and I have a couple of spheres. And these spheres will drop onto the box. And the objective that I want to achieve is to have the spheres actually deform this box and create some long lasting effects effects on it. So first thing is always I have created a ground plane and I set it as a collision object. Both the box and the sphere objects are set as rigid bodies and rigid bodies only have a couple of controls in them. First thing is you can control the density of the object which will essentially set its mass. And the second parameter you can control is the stiffness and the spacing. We will not really touch the stiffness and spacing parameters but we can set the density of the objects to be different values. For example, we will set the density of this box to be relatively small, 0.8, while the spheres will have a much higher density. This one will have a density of 10 and this one will be even heavier at 20. Some other parameters that we need to set are located in the global flex settings. One of the parameters that is important is this number of sub steps which we want to set to a higher value something like 8. The other two important parameters to know about are the plastic threshold and the plastic creep parameters. These are directly responsible for making your object retain its shape as it bends. So if you reduce the plastic threshold it will set the amount of force which is needed to bend the object to a smaller value and the plastic creep value if you increase it will increase the speed at which the object is bent so without much further delay let me just go and simulate the scene so after the simulation has gone through you can see that the spheres are dropping onto my box and as they do so they are deforming this box for us and this is exactly what we wanted to see if i wanted one of the spheres to also be deformed i can change its stiffness parameter to a smaller value right now it's at 0.1 but if i change it to something like 0.05 and re-simulate it should create a dent in the sphere as well before i do that let me also increase the radius of the sphere a little bit and i will see it better without the lucid modifier being applied and with the radius increased let's re-simulate the scene in this case the sphere actually became softer and it fused with the box because its own shape has been altered and this is evident if I take the sphere and if I offset it a little bit you can see that the sphere has actually bent and retained its shape throughout the animation. So these are some of the values which are really fun to play with because increasing the density will make objects heavier and behave more like metals whereas decreasing the stiffness and increasing the plastic creep will also affect the way that the objects bend. This method could prove useful for things like collisions and foam and other objects that need to retain their shape as they come in contact with other objects simulated in your scene. So I hope Hope you found some of these instructions useful. Thank you very much for watching.